It's something that was in the back of our minds ever since the first two seasons of Prehistoric Planet were released back in 2022 and 2023 respectively. Which was, if a third season were to be made, what time period would be decided on? And if anything did come out, when would it? If a new season were to be made, whether it would be set in the Late Cretaceous again to flesh out more of the Inside of the Mesozoic, since there were still many neat formations and animals to cover, or in a new time period entirely was something that was discussed at great lengths by viewers of the show. People suggesting that because Prehistoric Planet is such a general term for the show, not Mesozoic, Cretaceous, or Dinosaur Planet, it therefore would make it quite easy for the series to tread new grounds and explore different landscapes, time periods, and animals to keep things fresh. And as we've seen, this group has well and truly been validated. For a series as in-depth and of such high production quality, no one I knew, myself included, thought the series could possibly come back so soon for a new instalment, but as we've seen, we were very much proven wrong, and I'm very happy to have been. Prehistoric Planet is indeed back, and this time with the tagline of Ice Age accompanying it, with the series setting to explore a wide range of habitats and animals that were occurring at the end of the Pleistocene, with the synopsis of the series stating, quotes, from towering woolly mammoths to elusive snow sloths, terrifying saber-toothed tigers to resilient dwarf elephants, only three feet tall. The series reveals the epic struggles and unexpected stories of animals that once ruled the Ice Age, Viewers will journey through vast tundras, barren deserts, expanding grasslands, and melting permafrost, as these creatures battle for survival in the face of extreme climates, shifting landscapes, and the onset of the Big Freeze, and ultimately, the Big Melt." End quote. For what we know about the series' production, and the teams, and people behind it, we know that John Favreau and Mike Gunton, who were the executive producers for the first two installments, are back, along with the BBC Natural History Unit also being involved once again. The original score will also be composed by Hans Zimmer, Anzo Rosman, and Kara Telf from Bleeding Fingers Music, which is also nice that we get some consistency there, since they also did do the music for the last two seasons, and it was of very high quality. Something of note that is of great importance, and something that makes this new season different from the first two, is the narrator of the series, which this time does not feature David Attenborough who narrated the first two, but instead Tom Hiddleston. While it is deeply unfortunate that Attenborough is not returning for this season, something strange considering his known deep love of the series, and apparently being sad when there was no more for him to record when production for season 2 wrapped up. His lack of inclusion, whether for scheduling issues, executive decisions, health, etc. For what we got in the first two seasons, and of course for all of the other work he's done, having a fresh face isn't necessarily a bad thing. While seemingly just another celebrity brought in haphazardly, as has been the case with some recent documentaries, he has had experience with nature-related projects in the last few years, and we do actually have a clip from the series that came out recently that gives us our first glimpse at his style, and it's, along with his other work, are all great performances. For an example, you can hear some right now. A roll around the snow is the perfect way to give their thick, shaggy coats a clean. But for first-timers, all this snow can be a bit... strange. So with this, I certainly think he is adequate for the series from the performances I've showcased here, and though of course I do get the disappointments that Attenborough is not coming back, I'm certainly saddened myself. His presence in the first two series of course stands out as always, and is still there, not to mention all of his other work which is big enough to fill a library. Following him up in a continued series which featured him is no easy feat of course, but for whatever reason, Attenborough isn't involved and we do have to come to terms with that if we want to appreciate the new series for what it is, not for what it could be. And from the small crumbs we've currently been given, it's looking just as great as the first two parts. It's very neat to see the series return, especially since two of the major production and animation companies involved with the first two seasons, MPC and Jellyfish Pictures, have since both gone under and are no longer about. Thankfully for us, Framestore instead has taken up their role, so we're very fortunately getting more thanks to them, and the models from what we've seen so far are just as high quality as compared to the work done in the past two seasons. So any doubt on the quality of this new series can thankfully well and truly be largely put to rest. So that's another good thing to note. Now, to focus on the animals, we already know a good bit of the cast already as of the recording of this video, with the initial release statement stating that the scimitar-toothed cats, Homotherium, the large armadillo, Glypotherium, along with woolly rhinos, woolly mammoths, as well as the northernmost living ground sloth, Megalonyx, animals which featured in the first release clip for the series, are all present. As well as these animals, we've also seen images of a yet to be named ground sloth climbing up a hill with their baby, which from what I've seen discussed, could well be a depiction of Diabolotherium, 
A Peruvian sloth thought to have climbing adaptations due to the slender limb bones and the wide opening of the ulna they possess that are much more like living tree sloths than their ground sloth relatives. This could also well be a depiction of Nothrotheriops, a North American species that also has similar proportions. But for the meantime, we'll have to wait and see as to whether or not more information comes out on them before the release of documentary, or of course when it premieres. For other animals, we also excitedly know that dwarf elephants of some description will also make an appearance, though that doesn't necessarily narrow down just which dwarf elephant species will appear. The most well known are the pygmy Paleoloxodons of the Mediterranean islands of Crete, Malta, and Sicily, and many others in the region, but there are also the Channel Island pygmy mammoths off of the coast of California, as well as the dwarf stegodonts of Flores and varying other Southeast Asian islands like Java, Luzon, and Timor. So there could be many different potential depictions. Perhaps even we get all of them, there'll be more tiny elephants to go around. The final extinct animal we have some idea of is the featuring of an apparent carnivorous kangaroo which confirms that we will be getting some Pleistocene Australia segments, which is very much appreciated. This species will almost certainly be Proploliopus ocellans, a species from New South Wales, which stood at about 1.5 metres tall and had specialised teeth, which suggests they had an omnivorous or even carnivorous diet, with their robust skulls allowing them to eat a variety of foods. That does it so far for the extinct animals known to be features, but we also know that in general there will be a good balance of extant animals as well, which we've heard from Darren Naish and others involved in the series. And we've also seen from Simon Bell's LinkedIn, who is a producer on the series, that wedge-tailed eagles will be featured, indicating that they will also have an appearance in some form or another in the series. These environments at the end of the Pleistocene, while having so many animals that seem fantastical to us, were essentially modern ecosystems, so having a good chunk of animals featured being living ones would certainly be appreciated to bridge the gap and have that reminder that actually the world we're living in now, where megafauna is quite rare and not plentiful, is actually the rather strange one. For additional speculations and hopes, there are many diverse habitats and animals that could well be features across the planet, and of course not all can, which is where I'm hoping that when this series is done and dusted, that another one focusing on the same time period is either currently being worked on or could be made in the future. The first two seasons of Prehistoric Planets were made initially to be a 10 episode series before then being split up into seasons 1 and 2. So maybe, just maybe, even after this third season comes out, we could well get more Pleistocene content soon after. With a two season approach like this, that could then open the door to the Paleozoic, likely the late Permian to be covered down the line, so that with that we would get two seasons of both the end of the Mesozoic, the end of the Cenozoic, and the end of the Paleozoic covers, which given the series' flexible format could well be done, and would be wonderful if it could happen. I am getting ahead of myself with that, but as some kind of goal, I certainly think it should be aimed at, since there are so many weird and wonderful animals and environments that could be covers, and that people would love. Plus, it would give so many animals the chance to appear in a high-budget documentary for the first time ever, which we all of course would appreciate. I'm also holding out hopes for a New Zealand focus, since during the last glacial maximum 20,000 years ago, New Zealand was a rather different place, which is quite unknown to a lot of people with open grasslands, shrubs, and herb fields being dominant across the country, with the dense forest that the country is famous for today being relegated to the northernmost regions of the North Islands, where conditions were more temperate. There's so much of an opportunity to feature animals like adzbills, the giant New Zealand geese, the varying tiny wrens, harsh eagles, and the multiple species of moa that were roaming about, so hopefully we get that. And for something extra of course, with all of the relevant modern habitats being available, plus the presence of a wide variety of living birds to also feature, it could well be a real highlight. The potential for humans to be features could also well be on the table. As well, we are of course animals ourselves, and thus and many other human species were around during the time period that could lead to some interesting sequences. I do personally think that their depiction, and how they'd be best portrayed, is something out of the scope of the series however, and there are many non-human animals that deserve a spotlight, many of which have never even been featured before in a documentary in a big way. So if humans didn't have a presence, I would certainly be okay with it, and I'd understand. With the series premiering on November 26, there is just over a month to go until the new season's release, so when updates do come about, and they'll do so quite soon in all likelihoods, I'll be there to cover it promptly and make clear what new things have been shown, and what it means going into it. So, with that, I'll see you all next time, whenever that may be.